The praying which makes a prayerful ministry is not a little praying put in as we put flavor to give it a pleasant smack, but the praying must be in the body and form the blood and bones. Prayer is no petty duty put into a corner, no piecemeal performance made out of the fragments of time which have been snatched from business and other engagements of life. But it means that the best of our time, the heart of our time and strength must be given. The praying which gives color and bent to character is no pleasant, hurried pastime. It must enter as strongly into the heart and life as Christ's strong crying and tears did, must draw out the soul into an agony of desire as Paul's did, must be an inwrought fire and force like the effectual fervent prayer of James, must be of that quality which, when put into the golden censer and incense before God, works mighty spiritual throes and revolutions. Prayer is not a little habit pinned on to us while we were tied to our mother's apron strings. Neither is it a little decent quarter of a minute's grace said over an hour's dinner. But it is a most serious work of our most serious years. It engages more of time and appetite than our longest dinings or richest feasts. No learning can make up for the failure to pray. No earnestness, no diligence, no study, no gifts will supply its lack. Praying is spiritual work, and human nature does not like taxing spiritual work. Human nature wants to sail to heaven under a favoring breeze, a full, smooth sea. Prayer is humbling work. It abases intellect and pride, crucifies vain glory, and signs our spiritual bankruptcy and all these are hard for flesh and blood to bear. It is easier not to pray than to bear them. So we come to one of the crying evils of these times, maybe of all times, little or no praying. Of these two evils, perhaps little praying is worse than no praying. Little praying is a kind of make-believe, a salvo for the conscience, a farce and a delusion. The little estimate we put on prayer is evident from the little time we give it. How feeble, vain, and little is such praying compared with the time and energy devoted to praying by holy men in and out of the Bible. How poor and mean our petty childish praying is besides the habits of the true men of God in all ages. To men who think praying their main business and devote time to it according to this high estimate of its importance, does God commit the keys of his kingdom, and by them does he work his spiritual wonders in this world. Great praying is the sign and seal of God's great leaders, and the earnest of the conquering forces with which God will crown their labors. It may be put down as a spiritual axiom that in every truly successful ministry prayer is an evident and controlling force Prayer as essentially unites to the human as it does to the divine. The superficial results of many a ministry, the deadness of others, are to be found in the lack of praying. No ministry can succeed without much praying, and this praying must be fundamental, ever-abiding, ever-increasing. The effectual, fervent prayer has been the mightiest weapon of God's mightiest soldiers. The statement in regard to Elijah that he was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth, by the space of three years and six months, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Comprehends all prophets and preachers who have moved their generation for God, and shows the instrument by which they worked their wonders. I am sorry that I have prayed so little, was the deathbed regret of one of God's chosen ones, a sad and remorseful regret for a preacher. 